Earlier this year, Roberto Di Vincenzo celebrated his 90th birthday. One of the greatest ball strikers in the history of the game, the Argentinian won more than 230 tournaments around the world, including most famously the 1967 Open Championship. We met up with him recently to mark the occasion at his lifelong club just outside Buenos Aires. To win 230 tournaments, that is 230 weeks, that's pretty much a year just winning tournaments. And I've made good friends, I've built a good relationship with the public, I've built a good relationship with my opponents, and I've built a good relationship with my sponsors. And I've also been very lucky in life that I've held on to my health. I can still eat whatever I like, whenever I want. I still do that even though I'm 90 years old. My stomach does what it's told. Di Vincenzo learnt the game as a caddy here at the Ranelar Golf Club on the outskirts of Buenos Aires. Golf was then a minority sport dominated by British expatriates. Roberto and his friends picked up the game in their own way. I learned how to control the ball because when I was young, I taught myself to play with the branch of a tree as my club and with a little improvised cork ball. It was really just using my imagination. And my friends and I would always compete for 10 cent bets among ourselves because that was what it cost to go to see a film at the cinema. All of us would place a bet and we'd aim for a target, but it was really tricky because the weight of the cork meant it would get blown around all over the place by the wind. Perhaps that's why Di Vincenzo fell for Lynx golf as soon as he came to the UK after the Second World War. He was an immediate success at the Open, finishing just behind the legendary Henry Cotton and Bobby Locke from 1948 to 1950. Playing golf in the UK is a mystery. You never know how it will be. Because the weather is so varied. The morning can be perfect, the afternoon horrible, and the reverse as well. And the courses over there are special too, the sort of courses that you only find in England or in Scotland. It is very entertaining. And then on top of that, the people of England and Scotland are golfers of the soul. The whole family are golfers. If the father plays, then the mother and the daughter, the sons, all the children, the whole household plays the game. But putting remained an Achilles heel for the Argentinian, and despite coming close several times, he seemed destined to miss out on the elusive Open title. You always have the ambition of winning. Who doesn't like winning? Everyone likes winning. And I always loved winning. Of course I did. I also liked working hard to win. And I've worked all my life very hard, very hard indeed. It's something I'm very grateful. At the 1967 Open at Hoylake, Di Vincenzo led by two strokes on the final day, ahead of defending champion Jack Nicklaus and his playing partner, Gary Player. Gary Player said to me on the tee on the final hole, as we stood there before teeing off, he said, well done Roberto, congratulations. You've won, but there was still a hole to go, and the championship is over 72 holes. You need to win it over 72 holes, not 71, and you can lose it in just one hole. And I played that final hole with so much care and so much dread that my legs still shake when I think about it now. Di Vincenzo held himself together for a two-shot victory. He was 44 when he finally did win the Claret Jug and remains the oldest winner of the tournament. I was third three times, second twice and first once. Nice maths. I remember when I finally won the Open, people really took to me. They applauded me in real style. 
And when I lifted the trophy, I said, I hope I'll be able to hold on to this next year, because you only got the trophy for the year after winning it. And Di Vincenzo was also able to celebrate in style as well, thanks to a bet he had placed on himself to win at a local bookies, which dwarfed his actual winnings. They were paying 70 to 1, and I was staying in the house of an English guy. He'd lived over here in Argentina before, and so he put me up in his house, which was very kind of him. And we put down 100 pounds between us and won 7,000 pounds, which was masses of money at the time. We partied, we invited people round, we laughed and enjoyed ourselves, we had an amazing night with all the members of the Hoylake Club, which is still remembered today. The next year, Di Vincenzo would miss out on a playoff for the Masters title, infamously signing for one stroke more than he had actually taken on the penultimate hole after his playing partner put down the wrong score. But he remains philosophical. That Masters tournament gave me many benefits and only a few losses. It gave me both tears and smiles because, you see, we want lots of things in life, but it is not possible to have everything we desire. What is important is to have a good family, good friends, good health, which is the most important, and to be able to get to 90 like I have, with a mind that still functions. His game also functioned pretty well until recently, with Di Vincenzo competing regularly in super veteran events. His main motivation, he still loved playing golf. Hitting a golf ball has always been a pleasant sensation for me. The game of golf is a mystery, because every time you go out to play, you go out to get angry with yourself. The ball is there, it says nothing. You have to control it. And to control it, you need lots of practice and constancy. And I could control the ball. I'm not going to say 100%, but I had a certain amount of control, and I always enjoyed the game. These days, Di Vincenzo spends much of his time back at the Ranella Golf Club. It's often described as his second home, and the course is now named after him. He's the heart and soul of the club. They want to know all about my life, my sad little life. The eyes remain bright, so too the mind, and he has a wealth of stories from his career to keep the members entertained. This guy said, I can't believe I bet so much money on him. How can this guy even play golf? Look at the drunkard's nose he has. <laughs> Immensely popular with the galleries throughout his career, he's proud of everything he achieved in the game. Golf has given me many different things. It has promoted me in many different senses of that word. And I feel very proud to have achieved so much and for the friendships I made in nearly 40 years of playing in tournaments all around the world.